This is the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk. Hello, everyone. Tim Brando in New York, and welcome to the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk. Coming up, NCAA basketball as the nation's top-ranked team, Arizona, battles sixth-ranked Kansas. And then it's third-round coverage at the Phoenix Open, presented by Staples and Xerox. Harrison Fraser and Tim Petrovic currently share the lead at 13-under. Yesterday, Petrovic shot a career-low 63, a round capped by this birdie on 18. Serena Williams defeated Sister Venus to win the Australian Open women's singles title, completing the Serena Slam, becoming only the fifth woman ever to hold all four Grand Slam tennis titles at once. By the way, Serena defeated Venus in the finals of all four events. And it could be an American sweep down under when Andre Agassi tries for his fourth Australian Open title later tonight. That's all for now from the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk. College Hoops, Arizona and Kansas is next. Enjoy the game, everyone. This has been the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk. Lou Dawson has the top-ranked Wildcats running on all cylinders. Floor General Jason Gardner runs the show for Arizona, and the nation's top-ranked team is primed for the second half of the season and its toughest challenge thus far. Roy Williams in sixth-ranked Kansas features a leader of its own, preseason All-American Kirk Heinrich. The Jayhawks, who have won 10 of their last 11 games, are looking to offend the top-ranked Wildcats at home where they've won 25 in a row. It's a one-versus-six showdown in Lawrence, Kansas, as CBS continues on the road to the Final Four. makes a glamour stop today. We're at Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas, as the Arizona Wildcats come to town to take on the Kansas Jayhawks. Good afternoon, everybody. Burn Lundquist along with Billy Packer. The atmosphere in this wonderful old basketball shrine is always electric, more so today as number one visits number six. Arizona and the Kansas started the season as the top two ranked teams. Kansas slipped, but now in Jason Gardner, they've come back and it was Gardner and Heinrich, two of the best backcourt men in the country, Billy. Without question, Vern, what great coaches that we have, two of the best in the business here today. What great coaches like a great guard. And today in Gardner and Heinrich, we have two of the best guards in the country. Both are, are guys that love to compete. This is the kind of environment you've got to have competitors. Expect them to lead the way here today. Arizona makes its first visit to Lawrence in 22 years. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Located on the web at mbusa.com. Singular Wireless, the only company with singular rollover. They're your minutes. Keep them. And by Applebee's Neighborhood Grill and Bar. Eating good in the neighborhood. Applebee's. Kansas number six, Lou Dolson, in his 20th season as the head coach at the University of Arizona and inductee in the Hall of Fame last September. And in the front court, it's Luke Walton, Channing Fry, and Rick Anderson in the back court for the Wildcats. Jason Gardner, Celine Stoudemire. Roy Williams in his 15th season at the head coach at Lawrence. Recently won his 400th game and his starting five. Nick Collison, Jeff Graves replacing the injured Wayne Simeon. And the three guard starting five, Langford, Kirk Heinrich, and Aaron Miles.
The officiating group, Dick Carroll, Vern Harris, and Bruce Hicks. A rematch. These two teams played in Tucson last year. Kansas won it 105-97. This is Arizona's first visit here since 1981. Collison has it, comes left to Heinrich. There's the switch. Rick Anderson out on Heinrich. Entry pass. Graves back to Miles for three. He's not a good outside shooter. And that is exactly what Arizona is going to give him all day is the outside shot. So they'll double down inside, let him kick out there. Miles has got to show he can make that shot. Walton has it. Chased by Langford. Comes back outside to Gardner. There's a skip pass in the corner. Stoudemire launches a three in Kansas. Well, it's it, inside the line. If anything that you want to see if you're Arizona, Stoudemire in the game last year, two for 19. It was the story of the basketball game from the standpoint of a negative for Arizona. It's his first one. That's got to be big for him. Heinrich from the corner. He misfires. He had an off night in the loss to Colorado last Wednesday. Here's Rick Anderson. That is for three. Try over the top. One of the things, Vern, about these two teams that are completely different. One, you've got Arizona with incredible depth. I mean, they have they have 10 players that play 15 minutes or more a game. In the case of Kansas, you got four guys that play over 30 minutes a game. So not only from a standpoint of the time on the floor, but the foul trouble that could ensue. So that's really important for Kansas to be able to stay out of foul trouble early, particularly Nick Collison. 1-3-1 one, one zone right now. Look inside to Collison. Jason Gardner running the baseline. A great rebounder for a man his size. In the air, Langford wasn't sure what to do with it. Did what, the wrong thing. And what we see right now with this 1-3-1 one, one zone, Lute Olsen's telling us right away, Miles, you're not going to be able to make the jump shots outside. We're going to really keep pressure on Heinrich. Let's see if somebody else can score. This is Stoudemire. The switch with Collison. Now Heinrich back on it. Luke Walton playing on a sprained ankle. He's missed four games with four different ankle injuries this year. Gardner, jump stop. Jumper in the lane is good. It's 4 nothing. Oh, what a tough shot for Gardner. He's so powerful, so quick. Takes it inside against a bigger man, still scores. Watch this zone. Gardner, Jason Gardner running the baseline. Looks like he's buried down in there, but knows how to get to the corners. There's Collison. And Miles fakes it, finds Heinrich, out to Langford for three. Heinrich pass. Probably the extra pass, but I really thought Heinrich had a better opportunity to score. Off the glass, rebound Graves. Jeff Graves making his sixth start for the injured Wayne Simeon. Simeon will not play today, nor will he play in Monday night's game against Texas. Dislocated shoulder. Great pass. Excellent pass, good hands by Graves, who's really coming on well. Young man suffered automobile accident injury back in September. Really out of shape at the start of the season, but has played extremely well in the beautiful pass. There's typically Luke Walton. We have two fifth-year seniors there, one making the pass, one knowing exactly where to cut. Change of defense again. There's a case. Gardner gets caught on Graves' hip. Much too small to play him down in there. Graves gets the basket off the feed from Collison. Kansas with the lead. Walton. Collison takes it away. Nice defense. Here comes Heinrich. He'll force it. Feed left side. Lankford jumper. No. Tip no good. Graves put back oh, four. Three in a row. Graves. First 11 games, he didn't have double figures in anything, and now he is really on a tear. And Billy, he got an early foul trouble in Boulder, Colorado the other night. Here's Heinrich. No call. Gardner for Arizona. Excellent hustle by Stoudemire. And Gardner goes right by Collison and puts it off the glass. Got a little disadvantage in quickness there, wasn't there? Both of these teams love to go. Kansas leading the nation in scoring. Arizona number four. That's a breakdown defensively for Arizona. Heinrich has had some really good looks so far. Heinrich had 26 in a win here a week ago over Kansas State. Only three for 13 from the field 
in the loss of Colorado and miscommunication with Gardner and Walton. Gardner thought Walton was going to continue to come out. Time call. Kansas up by four at the 15-51 mark. Billy, you alluded to the uh, comparisons in the benches of these two teams. Well, it is, it is amazing. You have one player coming off the bench for Arizona that actually averages more points than the seven players for Kansas. And he is coming in the ball game right now, Hassan Adams. <clears throat> we watched him yesterday, an explosive backcourt player. Certainly one of the best that I've seen this year in the country of all these outstanding freshmen. Isaiah Fox has also come on the floor for Lute Olson and Michael Lee, the sixth man for Kansas, makes his first appearance in the game. He wears number 25. So important that Jeff Graves got off to a big start for Kansas. You can see Isaiah Fox playing him down inside. Much bigger body than Channing Fry. Nice cut. Collison gets the feed and the basket. And it's a six-point Kansas lead. Well, when you look at the score and the time in this game, Kansas is on the mark to score their nation's leading number of points. I mean, they're putting a lot of points on the board early. There's the pass from Heinrich. Good cut. Anderson, who normally is uh, pretty good with his footwork, out of position there defensively. The two outstanding seniors, All-Americans, Collison and Heinrich, team up very well there. Walton on a great backdoor cut. Gets himself to the basket. Foul was called on Heinrich is first, Walton gets the first of two. Well, when you look at the Arizona stats right now on the year, Luke Walton is the fifth leading scorer in the starting lineup, but that is really a, a misnomer in a way. He missed four games with various ankle problems and was taken out of one other game that he did play in, so that his stats will be there when they really need to be, and that's at the end of the year. One of the four he missed was one, the one loss at LSU. Coincidentally, he was able to attend graduation ceremonies because of the injury. Whistle, foul away. I think it's on Rick Anderson. Now, Lute Olsen started in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. He's gotten out of that and gotten back to man-to-man, -to -man, but a very good interior screening that time by Graves and Collison. Andre Iguodala is going to take Anderson's place now. Here's another outstanding freshman for this Arizona team. Great defender. Now, let's watch this inbounds play. Kansas loves to go over the top. Yesterday, Arizona worked on this for a number of minutes on end to make sure that they didn't get that easy inbounds layup. There's a trap on Collison, back to Heinrich. Pretty good job by Arizona there on the end. What a, what a screen, back screen by Collison. There's Graves, looks for Collison inside. With the Kansas, never brought the ball down. Again, we're seeing guys with good experience out here in the senior of Collison knowing how to keep that ball up in the air. Near turnover, it is. That's number four on Arizona. And Miles, that's going to be an offensive foul, a charge on Aaron Miles. A good call here. The two referees work together on that one. One had a block, the other had a charge. There we see that pass. Collison keeps the ball above his head, never brings it down, doesn't waste any time or space, and that's why he scored. Gardner, Walton, Igadalu, Fox, and Hassan Adams on the floor. Here's Adams. Rejected. Foul in the backcourt on Adams. Adams felt he could go over his defender, which he could, but he was right in Collison's way. There you can see, he's got Heinrich in pretty good shape, but he doesn't realize Collison right behind him could time the jump perfectly. Number 15, here's Aaron Miles. Gardner with the goal. Here's Jeff Graves with two more. Jason Gardner did not get himself squared up with Miles and tried to steal from behind. An excellent pass by Miles. Graves holding his ground. Graves perfect from the floor. He's 4 of 4 for 8 points. The junior college transfer who has uh, really come on in the absence of Simeon. Here's another turnover. Bad pass. Heinrich. Good hands by Gardner. Fox taken away by Miles. He finds Graves before the shot. Yeah. 
University of Kansas at home has won 25 straight. Last loss, last February. Now the last non-conference loss they had to a team that Lute Olson formerly coached. Iowa came in here and beat them. 98. What you have to think about Graves right now, he's doing a terrific job, but boy, he's got to play a lot of minutes against three other centers. And you wonder if his conditioning, which is incredible compared to where he was a couple of months ago, whether he can withstand that. And when you get tired, that's when you start reaching and fouling, going over the back. So far, he has been outstanding. Jeff Graves came in at about 290 pounds. He's at 265 now. He was really out of shape in the early goal. Good defense by Heinrich. Roy Williams said he has been just sensational defensively this year. Here's Anderson. Jumper is good. Allison had no business going the air on Anderson on that play. One of the three Arizona seniors, dry captains, along with Gardner and Walton. Here's Graves. Kicks it to Langford. Jumper. Got it. Game last year against Arizona. He was 7 for 11 at 19 points coming off the bench. He is now the leading sophomore scorer ever at Kansas in this uh, Roy Williams era, which really says a lot of how much he's developed. There's another turnover on Arizona. That's number seven, and we've yet to play 10 minutes. Now, one of the things, Vern, that we're noticing, Arizona is trying to throw a lot of cross-court passing. Kansas really doing a great job being there when the pass arrives. You think that Arizona's going to have to go down inside with some more direct passes and then start kicking out. Cross court's not working. Billy, you mentioned Langford's scoring average of 16 plus, highest as a sophomore since Danny Manning. Danny Manning is in the building today, of course, to start the 88 national. Miles off the glass for two more. Kansas has been sensational from the field, and the foul is going to be called on Miles. That's Miles, and he's trying to come over the top, maybe a little too aggressively. Great drive to the basket by Miles. And yesterday, time and time again, Lou Olson said, back off, make him shoot the jump shot. We have seen Miles able to penetrate. And he's going to have to sit now with his second foul, so Michael Lee, his high school teammate at Jefferson High in Portland, comes on. A 13-4 Kansas run. This is a team that couldn't find the basket Wednesday night. They shot 32%, losing to Colorado. They're up near 70 right now. Now these are bad fouls here, Vern. Fouls that are unnecessary. And Heinrich is asking maybe to take a little bit of a blow because this is some pace that this game's being played. Through Lute Olsen, you can afford to be a little patient here. I mean, he does have an ace in the hole in regard to that depth. One of the things we noticed yesterday is say, how can Kansas practice without the depth that they have? Hey, we saw Danny Manning, Steve Woodbury, Steve uh, uh, and Bushy here yesterday. Pretty good depth to practice with them. There's another foul. That's three quicker on Kansas. And Roy Williams starting to use and work these referees because this is going to be the story of this game. Can he keep his guys fresh? And can he keep his starters on the floor and out of foul trouble? That is going to be a big question. That is the second foul on Kirk Heinrich. No option but to leave him on for now. And Gardner gets the free throw. And you've got Arizona a team that shoots 146 more free throws than their opponents. And like a lot of top teams, they're right there where they make more than their opponents get a chance to shoot. Both of these teams do that. Mark's a good club. Yeah, in Kansas case, they've made 90 more, 99 more than uh, their opponents have shot. Right. There's Michael Lee back to Langford. That's for three. Got it. Boy, he is really comfortable with that jump shot. Sophomore from Fort Worth. Tipped away. Great, great hustle play. Another turnover. Good decision by Collison. Heinrich was off and running. Langford, 15 foot. Puts incredible pressure the way they put that ball, push that ball up the floor. You have got to get back. And right now, that's not taking place by Arizona. Turnovers and torrid shooting. A 13-point game. Stoudemire tries to quiet the crowd. 
and will for the moment. That's Quick release. No hesitation on his part at all down in that corner. That was a little 1 4 set by Arizona. Well, Heinrich is breathing heavily, dude. Don't yes, he is. He works so hard, but I tell you, this guy's an incredible competitor. Langford? Nope. Collison, nice job to avoid the over the back foul. Offensive board for Kansas. That's a foul he would have committed last year, Vern. He fouled out of eight games last year. A little too strong. Igadalu gets it for Arizona. Here's Gardner. Look at the stutter step. And the block from nice Anderson. switch. There's a basket off the front iron. Gardner chases it down. Well, you are looking at competitors plus in Gardner and Heinrich head to head out here on the floor. This is really fun to watch. Couple of senior preseason All-Americans. There they are again. Back screen. Fall away. Nope, too strong. Graves tips it out of bounds. One of the things yesterday, Lou Olson wa warned his players, you're not going to get the baseline drive. you got to pull up for the jumper. Gardner just couldn't hit it. and watch Graves down on the inside. And then you're going to see the good pass inside right from Miles as Fox tries to come over to help out. Graves is waiting. A good putback on his part. I'd have to say early in the game, Graves was the key to this ball game. He's not out there right now getting a well-deserved rest. Now he's been perfect from the field and he has yet to commit his first foul. 16,300. Some of the students slept in a hallway for almost a week in order to be the first in to the student section this morning when they opened the doors. Channing back, right back in the ball game. He and Walton trying to do a little. Oh, oh, oh. A reverse pivot. And that was a little high-low, and I really think that's something that Arizona can do well in this game, particularly if they're going to get Collison into some foul trouble. Collison and Walton are matched up with each other now. Channing Fry gets the basket, and that's the fourth consecutive point. Skip pass to Miles. Boy, he's just... Uh... Langford. Well, that was a perfect pass for yes. to Miles to Langford, but he is really having problems out there in the three-point range. And you can see a terrific rebound in traffic by Miles, but by Langford on the miss. And how about that hesitation to get that shot off inside? Terrific job. Foul is on Walton, his second. Being a left-hander obviously helped on the play. Langford makes it a three-point play. And it's back to an 11-point margin. Langford big offensively with 13 first-half points. There's the pick and roll with Fry. Nice, nice touch pass. Walton is so adept. Fry is hurt. And Fry is down. Official looks at him. Play continues. Langford gets the basket and was to the free throw. At the other end of the court, Channing Fry. I don't know if it's his wrist or he got hit in the eye, but he's really in some pain right now. That was a beautiful pass attempt by Walton. Fry just didn't have his hands up, as we saw Collison do earlier in the ball game, make the nice play. Look at that beautiful touch pass. Channing Fry should have caught that and put it right away. It looks like it's his wrist or his arm. He also had his eyes closed. Maybe that was just grimacing from the pain. So Fry is out. Dennis Lattimore, a native Kansan, playing for Arizona, is on for the first time. And here's Langford. Boy, he's averaging 16 points a game. And as he said, a big game against Arizona last year, coming off the bench and taking up right where he left off. And he's reached his average with 9.23 to go first half. 
Rick Anderson sits. Luke Walden sits with his second. Anderson's back on the floor. And Walden sits with his second foul. Looks like a zone defense now by Kansas. Yes, it is. 2-3 zone. Neon is on the floor. Number 55. But they're just trying to steal some minutes with Neon and stay out of further foul trouble. Neon is a freshman from Senegal. Put back is good. Igadalu gets the two-pointer. Igadalu is stands, they list him at 6'6, six, six, but with the length of his arms like a Sam Perkins used to be the North Carolina. He really plays about 6, 9, or 10. Aaron Miles leads the Big 12 in assists at 7 per game. He just got another, the pass to Collison. There's a cross-court passing right over the top of the zone. Back it goes to Gardner. Arizona not looking to go inside at all against this zone. Everything on the perimeter. Gardner in the air, tipped by Langford. Quick hands. Tussle for it. Gardner comes out for Arizona. As strong as any guard in the country. Five for three is not there. And Neon gets the rebound. Good, solid two-handed rebound against bigger bodies. Here we see Eagle Dollar going up there. There are those arms I was talking about, Vern. Some reach. Just when you're playing against him, you think, well, you know, this guy's, I'm looking down at him. Then when he goes up with that stretch, you find out just how big he plays. And here is the 6'10 freshman, 19 years old, from Kalak, Senegal. He played high school ball in California, so he's been in the States for three years. Mulai Nyan. Misses that. Lattimore clears it. Lattimore, another guy really chiseled himself off in the offseason. Young man from Kansas. His brother plays on the Kansas football team. Right, his brother's a tight end. Denver. Dennis Lattimore from Halstead, Kansas. And another Arizona turnover. That's 10. Heinrich doing a good job. Stoudemire would rather not put the ball on the floor. Got to be a standstill shooter. Time call. Jayhawks have had torrid shooting and they've forced turnovers. Seven steals by the Jayhawks so far. All of that has led to a 14 point lead at this point. CBS Sports Line's Dennis Dodd is in Lawrence bringing you his unique insight into this key matchup. Read all about it at CBSSportsLine.com or on America Online at our keyword CBS Sports Line. Report from the bench that Channing Fry suffered. A left shoulder injury, but not thought serious. He is expected back in the game. Fred, at the rate that Kansas is going, when you take in consideration their year this year, they have already beaten UCLA and Cal. Cal number two team behind Arizona in the back 10. They lost to Oregon during that stretch where they had lost to North Carolina and Florida. So Kansas has been pretty good in the back 10 this year. There's Stoudemire. The follow is not good, and the foul is called. Yeah, they lost three of their first six games, Bill. They lost uh, North Carolina, Florida, and Oregon. Right. That game seen on CBS. And then they won ten in a row. Right. Roy Williams had entered the preseason NIT 12 and 0 this year. Had never lost. He'd won every championship he'd been in in that. And then goes to New York to face a team that he does not want to lose to, University of North Carolina, whose freshman played sensational ball there. And Roy said that was one of the longest nights of his life, and he's lost some in the Final Four, so you know what that meant for. Meanwhile, significant foul. Kirk Heinrich picks up his third. So he will sit for the next seven minutes and 41 seconds. And here's where Roy Williams needed to have a lead, because Heinrich out now in foul trouble. Collison taking a rest. And you know that that depth in every respect favors Arizona. Arizona stays back, goes back to that 1-3-1 zone they started in. Jason Gardner running the baseline. Neon and Graves are on the floor together now, and here's a whistle and a five-second five second call. Five-second call. Adams is now out at the top of the key. Very, very quick. That 1-3-1 caused some problems there. 
You say Arizona is one of the deeper teams in the country. Oh, without question, as far as quality depth. You know, right. there are people that sometimes play a lot of players, and sometimes the players they play can play a role. But right now, I think that Arizona, in regard to their first 10 players, uh, would match up better than anybody in the country in regard to top quality players at various positions. Well, Lute Olson has Gardner, Adams, Anderson. And, and now Kansas playing a 1 3 1 with Collison running the baseline. Walton got by with a walk. Feed right side. Langford from Hawkins. Jeff Hawkins, who's on, number one. And Roy Williams stealing some minutes from his bench and very productive. Hawkins, a 5 11 red shirt freshman. And here's the same defense being played by Kansas that Arizona's playing, only they have a big man running the baseline. Gardner for three. Good block out, Collison. And Collison gets it in the hands of Aaron Miles. Back to Collison. No place to go. Gets to he got by with it. Adams should have tried to draw the charge and not go for the block on that play. Collison pretty much under control, but took it right into traffic. Now Collison on Walton, a couple of number fours. Here's Anderson. Got it. He likes that shot. That's, a two That's for two. Rick Anderson, whose dad, Gary, played for Lute Olson at Long Beach Community College back in the early 70s. Here's Collison. <laughs> and he sticks out his <laughs> So how do you like that one? You know, he's normally very placid during a game. He could not help but smile at that one. Well, he's shooting 40%. Oh, Walton is just throwing some wild passes, and I really think a lot of this has to do with his lack of playing time. You'll see this bank three. Now, it's okay if you call that, but if you put it up trying to put it right in the basket and it goes in, you better stick your tongue at it yourself. Well, that's the E in H-O-R-S-E. Well, he's shooting 40% from three this year. Doesn't take a lot of them, but so is Anderson. So, got two big guys that can step outside. And watch this 1-3-1 one, one now. And he got it. And here's the difference. Gardner is running the baseline, and he cannot do anything on that play. On the other side, you see Collison running the baseline. He eliminates that lob. Langford has been brilliant. 9 of 11 for 20 points. Arizona had Arizona State up by 20 at the half on Wednesday night. ASU came back to make it a very competitive game. Arizona needs that kind of effort now. Graves and Collison, big bodies in the center of that 1-3-1, one, one, causing trouble. Hawkins back outside. There's Gardner. Now miles back. Jason Gardner, goaltending on Graves. Shows you how fast Gardner is. With the dribble, he was able to beat Miles down for Here you see that alley -oop. See, Gardner's in the back, and he is at the mercy of a bigger guy when, he, when that ball is thrown over the top like that. And you see Langford had no trouble. Jason Gardner down the inside. Now, on the other, on the other defense, however, Collison is the guy down there, and, and you just can't throw the lob with he's posted right into the basket. Channing Fry back in the game. There's Hawkins. Langford, 9 of 11 from the field. And he's had an assortment of shots. Not all in close. One of the reasons I question using Gardner on the baseline is normally you want the quick guy in the baseline. See, he was at a disadvantage again. If that ball had been missed, Gardner would have been in no position to, to battle Collison for the rebound. Here's Langford. He has been outstanding. Playing well within himself, taking good shots, making good decisions. But for the point I'm making about having Gardner there, why do you want a little man on the baseline? Because the baseline responsibility is to run out to the corners. But here, Kansas does not have good shooters down in the low corners. Miles is down here. So basically, it's wasting Gardner's ability, and yet they're throwing inside, taking advantage of his lack of size. Let's see how long they stay with it. There's the pass in the corner. Stoudemire, quick release, not there. Channing Fry with the tip. Collison, good position. And another Kansas rebound. Here's Miles, jumper, knocked away by Iguodala. And here comes Gardner again. He's got great speed, doesn't he? He really does. There's the block from Fry. Now, a little different change of defense right now, playing man-to-man. -man. They get out of the 1-3-1, which
which was effective. Good backdoor. Catch. Anderson. Rick Anderson, the senior, number 33. I'm surprised that uh, Roy Williams got out of that 1-3-1. It was very effective. Three and a half to go. Inside, Collison's going to go to the free throw line. Nice little touch pass from Graves. It really is. And you see where that pass was thrown. Second time today, they've thrown to Collison. The first time, it was Heinrich. Right up above his head. He keeps his hands up nicely. Well drilled there. He goes for the putback. Jeff Graves, Iowa Western Community College. He's from Lee Summit, Missouri. He has been a force. He was not Wednesday night because of foul trouble. And they missed him desperately down the stretch in that one-point loss to... Colorado, Ricardo Patton's most significant victory. That ended 27 in a row losses to Kansas for the Buffaloes. Stay man to man. Stoudemire, nice jump stop off the glass. Good switch to his left hand. Obviously, you play Stoudemire for the jump shot, so he really had the advantage there with a little pump fake. A little stirring here from Arizona. Three minutes to go before the break. Heinrich sits with three fouls. Jeff Hawkins. I think they should go ahead and, and think about lobbing again to Collison. He's got such an advantage inside. There's the putback, not there. Nice job of controlling the ball by Iguodala. Now Gardner again. Jason Gardner. Nice. Closing in on the all-time minutes played mark currently held by Sean Elliott. Here's a foul underneath. Let's take another look at that uh, Salim Stoudemire drive. Well, what happened, obviously, is Miles was expecting him to take the jump shot. So he goes out at him quick. Stoudemire is able to just then go right by him. Miles probably saying, hey, the scouting report said the man wants the jumper, not the drive. Good dribble penetration. Now here's Iguodala from Springfield, Illinois, signed originally with the University of Arkansas, was recruited by Kansas, as a matter of fact, as well as Arizona. Yep. And then when Nolan Richardson was uh, relieved of his duties at Arkansas, he got his release and wound up in Tucson. And to show the versatility, he had seven assists against Arizona State. So he can rebound, he can score, and give up the ball. Shoot around today. Roy went over, put an arm around him, said, You're in the wrong uniform. That's sir. right. <laughs> we still wish you were here. A 6 0 Arizona run. 12 point margin. That's how we met. You're so smooth. It's a gift. It's one of those gifts that keeps on giving. Life is best told over a great tasting Miller Lite at a place called Miller Time. I want you to watch Rick Anderson right here. He's going to go ahead and take Collison up and then go with a backdoor cut and a beautiful pass going on the inside. There goes Anderson up. Collison tries to beat him to the top because he has to respect that jump shot. There's the backdoor cut. Excellent pass by Gardner. And Vern, take a look at this. In the 13 wins, 53. Then down in the losses. But look at where they have gone to today. 63% in this first half. Shot selection has been terrific. Nick Collison has helped give Kansas his 12-point margin. It's Miles... Lankford, Collison, Graves, and Hawkins on the floor for the Jayhawks right now. Well, I really think they can go high-low with Graves and Collison and beat Gardner down on that baseline. Throw right over the top of him. Hawkins takes the long jump. Oh, that's bonus. Well, he not only made the jumper, remember the beautiful uh, fast break pass that he made? These are very important minutes and points coming off the bench. Stoudemire. Takes it strong to the basket, puts it up and in. That's tremendous. And remember, as I point out at the beginning, last year in Kansas' win at Arizona, Stoudemire was two for 19, just could not buy a basket. Now Langford. There's Miles. They stay. See, with Anderson out on that wing, hard to get wing shots off. 
Gardner battles for it. Hell ball, possession arrow goes toward Arizona. Coming up on Singular at the half, Tim Brando and Bill Raftery in our New York studios. They'll get you caught up on all of today's action. Plus, they'll also take a look at Syracuse's Carmelo Anthony, one of the best freshmen in the country this year. That's all coming up on Singular at the half. Probably Arizona fans want to remind me, say, hey, Packer Gardner had 10 rebounds against Southern Cal. But he's not going to get 10 rebounds buried down on that baseline with Collison and Graves. Now, Gardner has averaged seven rebounds in the last three games. There's uh, Hawkins with the attempted steal. But he has no fear when he goes in there with those big guys. Little fadeaway, not there. Collison, another rebound. That's three for him. And here's Hawkins. Five of 15 from three-point range. He was thinking about it. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was going to launch another. Here's Lankford. Pulls up. What I love about Lankford's jump shot is that he has a nice release from three, but he also has that medium-range game. A lot of guys can't put the ball on the floor and pull up within 15 feet. And that seems to be the shot he's most comfortable with. Bad pass. Here comes Stoudemire for three. Oh, they needed that. He is so quick with that release. Actually, a lot of times, starts his release down on his waistline. Very unusual, but he can get it off quickly. Turns around and urges his teammates, let's uh, have a defensive stop here. Five of nine for Kansas from three-point range in this game. Hawkins has given them valuable time while Heinrich sits with the fouls. There's Langford again. Michael Lee from the corner. Wow! Michael Lee! The 1-3-1 one defense is not working out. Time has been called by Lou Olson and the Wildcats. for the soul. Jayhawks by 15. Roy Williams, week or so ago, won his 400th game. He's got the best winning percentage of all active coaches. Bob Huggins second. There is Lute Olsen and then Rick Majerus. I'm not sure which is more impressive, That's Billy. a pretty nice final that four something? right there. Yeah. And you know, when you think of Roy, he came to Kansas with Kansas being on probation. Right. And limited in scholarships. And yet he was still, after that first year, able to put them right on track. And what they've done, Vern, they've put, it was 3.5 seconds. They put 1.3 seconds back on the clock. No call on that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, now here comes the From call. From 90 feet, Lou also will go crazy on this one. That is, oh, I thought he was going to call it on Gardner. He's no, they called it on it. Hawkins. But that referee called that from 90 feet away. I thought a legitimate call. Lute Olsen saying he was wondering why the guy standing right next to me didn't make the call. We can see it right here. There's no question. It's a foul. But the referee looking right at it never blows the whistle. So Gardner at the line. And he'll shoot one more. Now one thing Kansas has been able to do is to keep Arizona off that foul line some today. I got Kansas. Kansas calls time. Roy Williams is going to scream at Jeff Hawkins. Well, he is because it gave up two points when there was just 4.5 seconds on the clock. Now it's time for our Applebee's hometown favorite. Let's take you back to 1988, the national championship game. Danny Manning and the Kansas Jayhawks against the Sooners of Oklahoma. Manning was the tournament's most outstanding player. He scored 31 points in that game and leading Kansas to an upset 83-79 win over the Sooners. The win was the Jayhawks' fourth national championship. They won in 1952, and they were also awarded two championships back in the 20s, 1922-1923. And Danny Manning, what fun it was, Billy, wow. yesterday to watch him work out with his uh, with his uh, 
young players move out the mark. Yep, and he, uh, I, I think it's a great advantage that uh, Roy Williams had. Nothing wrong with it at all, but Danny comes out. He's a great passer. Obviously, he can. He almost is like a coach on the floor, but he works out to get his workout. He's building a home here in Lawrence, and he says, this is my home. Here's Hawkins after buzzer. Now, Lute Olsen, again, is hot with this timer. He wonders, how is it possible he is really hot. And we saw what can happen in this league in 4.5 seconds. Hollis Price took it the length of the floor, which you can do. But Lou Olsen's letting them know that you got a slow thumb on that, on that uh, clock. Let's take a look at the clock as Jeff Hawkins drove the length of the field just a moment ago. Clock in the lower right-hand corner, Billy. Here we see the pass. And he couldn't get it up, but that would have counted. Well, that is the end of the first half with our score 52 39, Kansas. Let's go to Tim Brando in New York with Singular at the half. All right, Vern, no clock problems here. Coming up on Singular at the half, Bill Raftery and I will have scores and highlights, plus a look at Syracuse's freshman phenom, Carmelo Anthony. All coming up after this message and a word from your local CBS stations.